Alright, so this is a quick breakdown of the Star Wars Rogue One Jyn Erso Blaster. What we're going to do is crack this thing open, uh, rewire it, replace the motors, and paint it up to make it look a little bit more like the movie prop. So here's what we have straight out of the box. Crack open the shell, and we can take a look at the original trigger group. We can take a look at the original flywheel and sound card assembly. Closer look at that sound card. Closer look at the trigger and the splitters for the locks. And that's all of the internals removed. All right, so here's a quick overview of what we got. This is the Gen Urso blaster that has been modified with 180 motors and full brass barrel. Closer look at the cutouts to accommodate the heavier gauge wiring. I'm using 16 gauge. And all we have on here right now, as far as paint goes, is a uh, primer. Remove the shell, and then we can take a look at the power, the XT60. This here is a graphene 2S. Now, I haven't tested this with 3S, and the main reason for that is it's still wired into the sound card here. So as you can see, sound card is still enabled and it's running off of these leads here so that's feeding the power off of this uh, light gauge wiring and that's going to the stock speakers which can still be replaced and of course the stock LED array and you can see how that's fed into the plug here and here we have the negative feeding directly into the 180 motors positive lead. You can see that the IR LEDs for the glow strike function, it's still intact. So everything still functions as stock minus the locks which have all been removed. Now you can see that this splitter here, which was used for the multiple uh, this was the jam door lock and the magazine lock. Still using the circuit board here because this holds the heavier gauge wire in place. I was having a little bit of problem with it uh, interfering with the mechanism. So rather than using hot glue to hold that in place, I just used the existing circuit board with all of the leads snipped off. And you can see that we still have this extra lead here. This is... Uh, the normally open and this was supposed to be for motor braking but uh, as you can see the lead here it's not going to anything um, the way that motor braking is supposed to work is when you run it back to the negative lead on the battery it's supposed to short circuit the motors which makes them stop instantly uh, however um, when I tried adjusting the lead here all I was getting was uh, sparks. So just to be on the safe side, uh, we're going to leave that unhooked for now. But I was able to get that to successfully work on a modified Hyperstrike, also using 180 motors and a 3S LiPo. So maybe I can tear that one apart again and see why it worked on that one and not on this one. Because I had the engine braking on both the feeder motor and the flywheel motors. So either can stop instantaneously. And that's pretty much it for the Jyn Erso. After this, uh, rather than this, this uh, dull primer painting job that makes it look like a real weapon, we're going to add some uh, weathering and silver to make it look a little bit more like a movie prop. Oh yeah, and a closer look at the brass barreling here. This lead here, the feed lip, I probably should have extended that out further so that it goes all the way to the door. But uh, whatever, live and learn. If I do another one of these, then I'll, I'll do it differently. The tolerances on that are pretty, pretty tight. So if you bump the barrel, and this has already happened once, it can actually jam up the wheels. So what we have here in the end strike plug barrel adapter is this uh, 3D printed shim which 
keeps the barrel from uh, from moving around. And I'm not 100% sold on that on that look. It's really designed for the additional muzzle piece on top of that, but uh, it looks uh, a little unfinished. I mean, I suppose I could chop this off and print out a flush spacer, but for now, that's that's how it's going to be. I was just planning on slapping a uh, muzzle adapter on there, so it'll look like uh, a little more like the movie prop. But that's where it sits for now. All right, and here we have the final paint job with the silver paint weathering on there. It's all been uh, sealed with the clear matte uh, acrylic finish and the additional of the 3D printed uh, muzzle piece. And on the flip side, we can see that we have a 3D printed cover that's been painted up to look a little bit like a Star Wars style Greebly. And that'll probably be remodeled. That's actually using a design that uh, normally gets used with the uh, Strife with 180 motors. But uh, it doesn't look too out of place on the gin or so. But uh, we're just going to use that for now. It's more of a proxy piece than anything else. But uh, that's what the weathering looks like. And uh, next up is a quick little performance test. So a little note on the brass barreling on this project. Um, the main reason for doing it is to improve accuracy and to improve the feed reliability because there's a guide that uh, supposedly directs the dart directly into the breech. Now what I've noticed is um, the benefits are really only noticeable when you're using fresh darts, brand new darts. When you use uh, used darts or darts that begin to lose their rigidity, it will actually cause more jams than it prevents. Accuracy is uh, mostly beneficial when you're using a symmetrical style dart like a suction cup dart and not so much when you're using the elite darts that have a little uh, air release valve hole in them. 